you very much for joining everybody. Um, delighted to be uh, working on this joint webinar between BMC and AIM, uh, title being Data Serve Next Generation AI Portal, Enhancing the Remedy Force Experience. Just before we kick off, I will just do, we'll just do a couple of introductions uh, so you know who's speaking on the call. And uh, we'll start off with Olivier from BMC. So over to you, Olivier, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Welcome everyone to this webinar. My name is Olivier Seegers. I've been an employee for BMC for the past 15 years, working in the IT service management section of it. And for the last five years, I've been a technical marketing consultant for Remedy Force. As BMC, we are delighted to announce our partnership with AIM, for which we can provide our customers with an AI chatbot and gamification enabled self-service experience. And in this session, we'd like to introduce DataServe for Helix Remedy Force, which is a next generation AI enabled portal. That's great. Thank you very much, Olivier. Um, so I'm Matt Smith. I work for AIM. I've been working in the solution architecture space for about eight years now. Um, started off with Remedy, moving on to Remedy On Demand, and then um, sort of the Salesforce and, and Remedy Force area. Um, past five years or so. Um, so my sort of expertise is around IT service management and self-service, um, but importantly as well, which is what I've highlighted on the screen there, I am DataServe's uh, lead designer. Uh, so that's me, and I'll just pass over to uh, one of my colleagues, Steve from AIM. So hello, and again, a very warm welcome to all our international audience um, to the second of our two webinars that we're running today. So as Matt said, I'm Steve Ackland, I'm CEO of AIM, and um, and I have, gosh, 20 or so years under my belt from, from IT service management um, and the ITIL best practice. And just to say that we're absolutely delighted to be sharing the platform also. So thank you, Olivier, for those kind words uh, with BMC Software and showcasing this next generation um, smart self-service portal and integration builder. And as the guys have said, comes with, with a chat bot. And it not only supports uh, BMC Helix Remedy, of, of course, of course, uh, but also very importantly, it's uh, available as a wider enabler of cost-effective digital transformation and the most important that digital experience gain um, out to your organization. And just to add that data has been developed over the last few years, uh, providing uh, what we like to think of almost as an information highway solution to organizations who, who want to embrace this change, but as we well know, can be extremely expensive. Um, and this provides a configurable, uh, universally adapted platform to help remove the cost and pain uh, from doing a change of this sort of type and magnitude. So I very much hope you enjoy the webinar. Um, please feel free to raise any questions as we actually go through the event. Um, one of my roles on this, this webinar will be to actually look out for those. And um, we'll raise those probably uh, towards the end in the Q&A session, uh, whereby we put those out to the group who obviously can hopefully provide some useful answers. So um, again, um, thanks again for, uh, for joining and I'll pass you back to Matt. Thanks very much, Steve and Olivier. All right, so I pulled together a quick agenda here. So we've done our introductions. Um, we're going to be moving on to what is data serve. Of course, Olivia and Steve have given you um, some, some words there about exactly what it is. Um, I'll do the same. And we'll also have a diagram to try and explain how it works. I'll then move into from kind of like the higher level explanation of data serve down to some of its lower level, level features. And we've spoken about chatbot, um, but what other things does it do? The, the next bit, I've pulled together a couple of slides on AI. And the reason why I've done this is that you've probably seen AI mentioned with pretty much every modern software product over the past uh, few months and a couple of years. And I think it's very important to treat it uh, less as a buzzword, but actually something that's really enabling uh, businesses and end users uh, to get out you know, what they're looking for from a piece of software. So. I'm spending 10 minutes, it'll probably be a little bit quicker, but it's around me explaining exactly what does that mean? Because AI can mean everything. You know, data serve isn't yet self-aware, <laughs> but, but however, it has AI features such as natural language processing um, and machine learning. And so I'm gonna tell you about those specific flavors. So you can get a feel for when we say AI, exactly what we mean in the data serve context. 
We'll then move on to the demonstration. So around 25 minutes or so for that. And that should leave us about 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. Um, but as Steve mentioned, if, if you do pop something in and it's you know, pertinent to the screen that I'm on or, or the thing that we're talking about at that time, Steve may well butt in and we can answer it there and then. Okay, so what is DataServe? Um, on the right hand side, we've got what I like to call our bow tie diagram. And this really encapsulates what DataServe does. And I'll talk it through very, very briefly. So on the right hand side, you've got all the services that you need um, to run your business. And of course, Remedy Force is going to be in there. You've also got other portals. You might have supplier portals. Um, HR systems, finance systems, facilities, as an example. If you haven't yet, of course, got all those teams doing sort of some good shared services on, on Remedy Force. That then gets pushed through through integrations into DataServe in the middle. And it then pushes that data out to your, your users and your stakeholder groups on the left-hand side. And you'll see my first point there at the top left. Um, DataServe is a tool agnostic self-service portal and I'll just explain exactly what we mean by that when you consider uh, tools like uh, Remedy Force, um, Remedy also you know Helix ITSM now um, they come with their own self-service portals and where DataServe differs is although of course we do have the out-of-the-box Remedy Force connector and that's a really important part um, of our system um, it, it can actually function completely standalone so you don't even need to have Remedy Force, or you could have Remedy Force plus a load of other systems. Um, DataServe doesn't really care, to be honest. It's there to integrate with whatever you have and push it to your users so that however complicated your service environment is, maybe you've got some legacy systems in there. You might have some systems in there that don't have a portal. You can actually do that sort of digital transformation piece and push all of that data out to your users through a unified front end um, with a modern user experience, which is what DataServe is offering. And I like to see it, I, I call it a skin. It's almost like a skin across your organization's entire service estate. So as I said, how, however messy that might be, um, you're showing a nice cohesive front uh, to your users. Uh, I like to think of the analogy of a, a swan swimming on the lake. The legs are going crazy underneath the water, and then you have a nice, well, composed swan above the water that's how you can see data serve operating in terms of your end users they don't really care how many systems or portals you, you need to run your business all they're aware of is that they log into data serve and that is the one place that they go to to submit tickets uh, service requests view knowledge as an example in addition to that kind of more traditional self-service um, offering in terms of submitting forms and tickets and the like. Um, a key part, of course, is around data service integration capability. If it couldn't do that, it wouldn't be able to function. And But what sets it apart is the fact that it's a no-code integration builder. And I'll actually show you during the demonstration how that works. Um, and importantly, on top of that, we also have the automation engine, which again is completely no-code and we'll be seeing during the demonstration. And what it means is that somebody like me, so maybe someone of a, a technical business analyst um, type capability, knows a little bit about integrations, but is by no means an integrations developer, never touched a bit of code in their life. Um, you can actually go ahead and because it's a no code wizard driven system, start doing some really rather fancy things with automation. And one of the things I'll show you, and I'm sure we've had to put up with this a lot recently with everybody working from home is around new uh, team creation within MS Teams. So if users are getting together on a you know research project or a bit of work collaboration on something, um, enabling users to be able to fire off those payloads to the Graph API, which is what it is in this context, and get those teams created automatically without relying on first line to having to do those manual sort of changes. Um, so it's created by AIM. And as I said, very pleased to be in collaboration with uh, BMC here in terms of a joint marketing effort and also uh, with our out the box Remedy Force connector. And, um, but just a point really that we're experts in ITSM and self-service and we are a BMC partner. 
Um, as I said, they're backed by BMC in terms of these marketing efforts that we do in these webinars, and it's the recommended self-service upgrade for Remedy Force. So if you're working with Remedy Force 3.0, and sorry, self-service 3.0, and there's just something more that you need, maybe you need to start integrating with some other systems, and you, your users are really shouting about chatbot and AI and that type of thing, this could be um, a good tool for you to look at. And then in terms of who it's aimed at, um, if you're a smaller organization with a couple of hundred users and you're using Remedy Force uh, for your self-service and your, your IT service management, you don't really have any other systems in the mix and you're not really too keen on doing automation right now, we just simply wouldn't recommend data service to you. Um, we always are driven by a consulting led approach as a, a trusted advisor to our customers. It's not all just about selling the product, it's about advising people on, um, in our view, the best way of going about things. Um, it is for the larger organizations. So from a, you know, a good few hundred up to a good few hundred thousand users, um, but particularly where they have complex service needs. So remedy forces in the mix, as well as a number of other systems that you want to integrate with, as well as the, the automation that you're looking for. That's where you really start to then get a return on your investment. Okay, so in terms of features, the first one I've brought up at the top left is chatbot. The reason I'm starting with that one is first, you have a nice video here within the PowerPoint presentation uh, that I've pre-recorded. Um, this is your first view into uh, the chatbot. Um, I think the PowerPoint is struggling to keep up. So you may have seen it flash uh, there a couple of seconds. So I may end up pausing it. Um, chatbot is actually one of the things that uh, a lot of our customers come to us initially on because they want to start incorporating chatbot into uh, their user's journey within Remedy Force. And, and that's how they come to us. We then start, of course, talking about all the other added features that DataServe has. Um, we'll, we'll see chatbot during the demonstration as well. Um, gamification is another thing as well. Um, you'll see during the demo at the top right hand part of the screen that this is slightly blurry here because when a modal opens in data serve the background gets blurred um, you'll see a tree icon with a number next to it and that's the way uh, we do our badges and our points for within the gamification system and very simply what it does is it understands the, the different tasks that users are doing on the system uh, whether that is logging in you know using the chat bot submitting some feedback on a knowledge article for instance all those good things um, earn that user points and they can go up different levels and earn different badges. And um, what we um, advise our customers to use it for is to help drive adoption. So where you may have a, you know, a monthly prize for the team or the user uh, that has earned the most points in that month, um, then that's, that's where gamification really sits. And it's worth saying as well, you can't cheat. So you can't just log in a hundred times and expect to get a load of points. There are rules around how often you can earn points for a certain task within a certain time period. Uh, the next two things, I won't spend too long on this bit here um, because we do have two slides ab about this, but this is around um, what sets data serve apart from the traditional um, self-service offerings that are out there in terms of it's using natural language processing for its intelligent searching and also machine learning, which means that it gets better over time at recommending the right resources to the right people based on the context of their search. Well, um, we, of course, mentioned a few times here um, that it's fully integrated out the box with our Remedy Force connector. Um, these are the, the main parts that we integrate with. So displaying broadcasts, allowing users to search for knowledge articles, um, service request definitions are, are possibly the, the most fun part of the system, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how that works, but they get integrated over as well and, and actually created uh, through a, a, let's say, a daily sync into data server. Um, service health, approvals and tickets, so things like incidents, service requests, change requests are all shown in there as well. Uh, fully mobile, of course, as everything needs to be nowadays. Um, it's worth noting that, and this was actually a design decision uh, that we made at the time, we don't have a separate app for data serve. It actually just runs as a web application in whatever browser you launch it in. So uh, it's completely scalable based on the, the item that you're using, whether that's you know mobile phone, tablet, desktop, 
um, depending on your resolution, it will scale itself accordingly um, so that you get the best experience uh, for whatever device you're on. And um, one of the reasons we did that is firstly, that's you know one of the trends really that's happening uh, right now. It means that we have one fewer app to, to maintain, which is um, good for everybody. Uh, but also it means that our customers have a fewer, one fewer app to maintain. So if you're pushing apps out through AirWatch and you need to get those apps validated and all those types of things, you don't need to worry about that process. It's actually just a website. Uh, it uses the latest front-end technology. So if you're interested, it uses something called React, and that's the same front-end technology as used by Facebook and many other uh, leading services. You also have full branding control. And uh, I just wanted to mention this because not only is it a great feature, um, but you may not like purple and blue as much as I do. Um, it's, it's worth saying that this is our default branding that we use for presentations, um, but, but no customer goes for this. They, of course, want it to look like their own website. They want it to look like uh, the applications that they might develop themselves. And the beauty of it is, again, it's, there's no code. It's all declarative. There's a wizard that you go through um, to set each of the colors, um, you know, upload images and the like, and you can really make it your own. And of course, you don't even need to call it data serve. You can call it whatever you like. And then the last two, we've spoken on these a little bit before, the no-code automation and the no-code integration builder. And we'll see that in action um, in our demo shortly. Next two slides then are around um, the AI side and explaining exactly what we mean by that. And as I said before, AI sounds great, but what's it actually giving me? Is it enhancing the user experience? So starting from stage one on the left-hand side here, um, we start with the customer query, right? So customer logs into data server and they type in, my printer is broken. And you can see that that typo is, is of course, uh, meant to be there. It then goes through our language contextualized filter, or LCF as we call it. And it goes through three distinct processes. It goes through an exclusions process. And the reasons for that is that we might not care about words like my and is, uh, as an example. So, so words that need to be excluded from the search string so that the user isn't getting results back that are irrelevant occurs. Um, it then goes through a corrections process. So for instance, uh, broken would be corrected to broken. But the reason why it's um, contextualized by language is that it understands the user's primary, la primary language and it will go off and use the correct um, dictionary in order to do that work. It's worth saying as well that there are certain words that we use in business that dictionaries don't know about. So data serves a great example of that. If I typed in data serve, it might want to autocorrect itself to database. And that's not what you want. So we have a business terminology table, um, which identifies and defines these types of things. So that words that are specific to your business um, aren't autocorrected to something that's wrong. They're actually excluded from um, the, the corrections process. And then the next bit, this is really important. It's a really key part of the natural language processing that DataServe does, is it's, it's understanding of the ontology of a word. And what we mean about that as an example, uh, and it's this example here, if a user types in printer, uh, DataServe knows how other people have been searching and, and using those types of keywords in the past and, and how they've then gone on to find good resources that help them out. And we can start building up this ontology over time. So where a user search, searching for printer, DataServe may also at the same time search for paper and jam. And those are actually enhanced, um, added into the existing search string to provide our enhanced search string. DataServe then goes off and it does its uh, initial results. So it finds all the things, all the resources. So things like service requests and knowledge articles, um, P1 notifications, that type of thing, um, that, that have a match against the customer's enhanced search string. Moving on to stage four, um, this is when we start doing a match score. So we start scoring the results. And it's important because in stage three, we might have returned 100 items. But we only want to start returning the items that have actually got a pretty good, decent match that we're pretty sure are going to help our customer based on exactly what they've searched for. So we have a look at all the matches we've made. How closely was that customer query matching against that, those resources that we have? 
and fuzzy matches, so matches that may be one or two letters removed, for instance, from, from a match, uh, and exact matches. Those points are tallied up and you get a match score. Uh, we then go into stage five over here. We take that match score, we multiply it by something called the persona weighting. And, and this is a really important part of, of DataServe and what sets it apart. The next page will explain exactly how we work out the persona weighting. But very briefly, what it is, is DataServe is continually refining its models and working out what types of knowledge, under what circumstances, um, what types of resources, I should say, work for different people. And it's based on um, the view that People who are in different roles or have different personas, as we call them within DataServe, like to consume or use different types of resources. So you may find that uh, our developer persona might really like a certain user guide that's written in very techie language, whereas our uh, director's persona may like something slightly different. And DataServe is always constantly working out what works and what doesn't. And these persona weightings are therefore applied against that match score. That then gives us our percentage rating and it actually sorts the results that are presented to the user by that. So they could get, you know, three, four, five results all sorted uh, by the, the percentage rating. This next page then explains how that machine learning process works. So this could come before or it could come after or work in tandem with the, the previous process that we've just looked at. Um, but what it basically is doing is where we have recommended results presented to the user, the user then interacts with those. And there may be some explicit feedback. So maybe they gives it a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or they give a knowledge article a really high rating and say that it's great. Um, all of that is, is brilliant, but we know that users aren't always uh, willing or just don't have the time to start doing that type of thing for us. So we have to start looking at the implicit clues that users give us when they interact with resources. So a good example being if somebody opens up a knowledge article and doesn't scroll all, all the way to the bottom and closes it within two seconds, it's probably fair to say that that knowledge article isn't useful to them. They may have spent a little bit longer on it if it was. Um, so it's these type of implicit clues, you know, maybe they opened up a, a request, saw the questions that are on there, realized it wasn't relevant and closed it. So all of these implicit and explicit clues are all mashed together with every single uh, customer interaction with the resource that we have to then work out um, the, the user's specific rating uh, with that interaction. And just at the top, if we have a good interaction, a positive interaction, we go through this keyword enrichment phase. This is all done automatically in, in the background. This is how it's continually learning and refining its models. And just to give you an example of what we mean about keyword enrichment, I think we've probably all been there where we're writing knowledge resources, they get published and they kind of sit there for a while. We don't necessarily review them as, as often as we should do. Um, and also sometimes they're not written in the language that our users are after. And maybe in the keywords section, we, we haven't put the right amount of keywords or the correct keywords for that knowledge article. DataServe helps automate that document review process because it's looking at the keywords that users have used to get to that particular resource. And if it was a positive interaction and some of those keywords don't yet exist within the resource, then they can actually be saved automatically against it. And so it means if somebody searches for um, printer jam and they come across the user guide and the user guide is great and it fixes their issue for them. If jam wasn't a keyword against that user guide, then DataServe will pop it on there automatically because it's saying a user or users that have searched for printer and jam found this useful. So that keyword enrichment all goes uh, off together. And those um, secondary keywords, as we call them, also um, have their keyword ontology understood. So you start building up a really good picture about the content of these uh, resources and how people are getting to them and how useful they are. And then uh, the middle bit, which is whether it was positive, neutral or negative, is all around saving those interactions in data serve and building up a picture of those user ratings to then have an average persona rating. So we know that when somebody searches for these types of keywords and they're a particular persona, and they come across a particular document, 
that's got a relatively good chance of being useful or maybe it's got a very poor chance of being useful and those uh, persona ratings are again something we can see uh, very shortly within our demo so speaking of demonstration this is what we're going to be looking at um, so we'll start off with a bit of a, an overview sort of navigation so i'll just show you top to bottom pretty much uh, the different sections that we have within DataServe, and how they work, and what they look like. I'll talk briefly about the Remedy Force Collector, and then we'll move on to gamification, just because it's at the top of the screen, so it makes sense to talk about it there. The main part of the demo then um, comes down to the intelligent searching. So I'm going to pretend to be uh, Matt, who's having a bad day at work, and there are quite a few things that he needs to get sorted. So some things aren't working, he needs to speak to the service desk, uh, printer's got a jam, his monitor's broken, and I'm going to show you how a user can interact with DataServe when they have those types of issues, and we'll talk about how DataServe is enhancing their search strings and finding what they're looking for. Um, we'll also look at the machine learning aspect of it, so I'm going to show you some of the back-end tables, or at least the tables that are in the administration console, so that you can start getting a picture for how we build up this persona rating um, against each resource. Uh, that'll lead us nicely into chatbot. So I'll, I'll show you how we talk to it and how it talks to us. Uh, we call it SmartBot within DataServe. And uh, we'll have a look at a printer issue and we'll, we'll be given a user guide for that. But then the main part of that really is, is then going onto the automation side. So how is DataServe allowing us to submit requests for new MS Teams teams uh, to be created? And once we've gone through that process, I will also then show you what it looks like in the admin console. Um, automation's great, but it can be tricky unless you have the right tools um, to do the job. And DataServe allows you to do it, as I said before, um, without being like an integrations sort of coding expert. Um, and if we have time at the end, I'll also just show you our, our gamification um, screen, just to see how we configure that and the, the types of things that you can specify there. So that's it for the slide deck just for a moment. So I'm just going to move it out of the way just so I can track everything that I want to show you in the correct order. And this is our first view of DataServe. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it into full screen mode to get rid of my taskbar and the bits at the top. So there we go. All right, so the first bit then is around overview and navigation. So I'm going to start top bottom and explain everything uh, that you're seeing here. Um, top right, we've got our notifications bell. It's all the usual things you expect to see, possibly some of those lower priority announcements that we want to send around the company. Um, you can do that within DataServe or take feeds from the intranet or, or Remedy Force or wherever it might be. Um, and things like where your approval is required and if a ticket's been resolved. All that type of stuff can be flashed up as a notification there. We also have uh, my profile. And this is displaying to me, uh, you know, certain, certain fields. Um, I can also have the option of changing some of these if I like. This is being synced from Active Directory, by the way. Um, and some of our customers actually like the, the idea of using this to also sync back to Active Directory. So maybe there are certain fields within here that we'd like to uh, have our end users actually maintain. So for instance, telephone numbers or their preferred name. Um, DataServe can actually act as a way of helping you cleanse Active Directory. So I could come in, change my preferred name and push it back to AD. Um, and there's also a toggle you can see there for accessibility mode. So users that require that. Um, that's built in and you can have a higher contrast version of data serve, uh, you know, with fewer icons and pictures and uh, nice high contrast text. The next bit is the cog. And this gives us access to the administration console. Um, and we'll click on that shortly, show you what that looks like. And then moving on to uh, gamification. Um, so as, as I said, well, if we have a bit of time, I'll show you what this looks like in the administration console. Um, but this is where you can see your badge and, and the points that you've got uh, to date or, or as of now, uh, depending on how it's configured. Uh, moving down a little, we have our alerts carousel. And you can see this in the Remedy Force world as being your, your broadcasts. 
in many ways because this is taking a feed from from that information um, but it's also important to be aware of the fact that it might not just be remedy force data you might be have um you know business continuity software for instance um, that is also uh, feeding information into this alerts here and moving down this is the star of the show really this is our um, intelligent search bar i'll just type a few words in there so you can see uh, what it looks like and this allows us to search across many different things in one go so as an example here we've we've put in a, a term that's allowed us to see some requests and some knowledge articles and i won't go into that just yet of course we'll have a look at that when we go into um, our use cases shortly and in terms of launching chatbot it's very simple you can just click on our chatbot icon there and this is how we interact with the chatbot so users have always got that option um, do you just go with the intelligent search to use chatbot and you can have different defaults about what they want to have as a default when they log in for example moving down a little bit we have our um, service health cards so that, again this is taking a feed um, from the service outage object within remedy force and, and displaying that within data serve and again also take feeds from other systems as well so if you've got other sort of monitoring software out there that possibly isn't isn't going into remedy force you could hook that up to data serve as well um, it's worth saying everything that you can see here is all very modular so we use what we call a gridification system which means that um, our customers can create new widgets um, or components as we call them move them around change the ordering and that can be on a persona by persona basis and you may say that certain users like things a certain way and others like like it another way and what we've kind of seen so far is like the the brave new world of, of ai enabled self-service but we're, we're very conscious that you can't always just have a search bar although this does search across tickets and all the things that people would be looking for um, sometimes it's nice just to have a table of data as well and we're very conscious of that and that option is always there and what we have down the bottom here um, th this isn't an out the box by the way that these are configured on a customer by customer basis either by us during implementation or by the customer because we'll always leave you self-sufficient to do these types of things and let's let's toggle them so you can see what I'm talking about so these are the types of data um, that you can display uh, within these uh, components we have a lot of components out the box uh, particularly around remedy force with our connector and one of the ones you're seeing here is the latest tickets component and it's not just a case of what's open what's closed it's about uh, what's open what's requiring attention what's been recently closed so it's about tickets that have had recent activity against them and uh, as i said this is just one component out of many that you could have you don't need to have this you could tweak it you can have it in a different location it's just as an example um but one of the the design features of data serve is always to try and do things on this screen now, naturally, when it comes to submitting a new service request, you're likely going to have a modal or you know a pop-up um, come in front of the screen so you can submit that. But where possible, we like to have everything um, front and center on this page here, as opposed to needing to go through sort of long category trees or go um, you know four clicks deep within uh, another screen, for example. And to show what I mean by that is there's a couple of uh, tickets here so the new laptop one for instance you can see is awaiting approval what they deserve does is based on the status uh, you know when it comes to the remedy force connector but also any other systems um, that you integrate with uh, is to work out what's the what's the next action that we're waiting for the user to do here um, how can we help them help us because at the end of the day we, we rely on our users to perform a work management role and data serve is trying to do that in the easiest way possible so instead of users having to go in and you know keep reviewing endless lists of tickets to work out what they need to do this latest tickets component as an example tries to to put that front and center so i could go ahead and, and approve or reject this of course you might want to have another field in here that, that gives a summary and you know the latest notes and all that type of stuff is supported just kept it very simple here um, additionally let's have a look at printer is not working you can see this is impending and what data server has done is it's pulled through the latest message 
that the analyst has added to that ticket. Um, because of course, the reason why it's impending is that there's some information that the analyst needs from me. And I can provide that error message actually from within here and, and actually reply without even having to open up the ticket, go to a different screen, have a look at a related list of, of conversations, for instance. So it's, it's really bringing together kind of the old and the new, the, the, the kind of traditional lists and tables that people expect to see, but putting a new spin on it and making it easy for customers to interact with us. Um, you've got things like, you know, approvals. You know, there's a component there to show what's awaiting approval. Um, the what's popular section, again, things like knowledge articles and videos, but people within my persona have actually been watching and reading. And so there might be a go live, right, for another system. There might be a, um, a video about that, or there might be a knowledge article. If people who are doing a similar role to me are watching that, then it will pop up here. And I might say, right, I'll have a look at this, this user guide or this video. Um, additionally, just to show the, the other types of components, we've got an events component in here. Uh, this is showing us information like this is a bit of SAP maintenance that's going on over the weekend um, and things like a, a change freeze. Um, with a picture of some ice cubes, a um, bit of comedy there, to uh, to show that we've got a change freeze this week. So that's a very quick walkthrough, um, kind of top to bottom of DataServe. And what I'm going to do now is put my user hat on and pretend to be uh, Matt, who works for an organisation, and he's having, a, as I said before, a bit of a bad day and needs some help with some of his with some of his issues. So I'm going to start off within our search bar then. Um, first thing is Matt's using uh, an application and he's struggling and he needs maybe a little bit of hints and tips about how, how to use, uh, maybe it's a payment system that he's struggling with. He wants to book some time in with the service desk to see if they can help him. Spell correctly there. You'll see me spelling incorrectly shortly. <laughs> And we'll see how it how it corrects itself. Um, so book time with service desk, great. We've got a, a request that's being presented to me here. Um, I can click on that, fill it out as you'd expect, um, and submit it. Now, in terms of these modals here, you might be wondering, well, where, where's this data coming from? Well, it could be a service request definition uh, from within Remedy Force. And the way we handle that is the, the connector goes off and this can be at a set frequency or it can be manually pushed if you've had a, a recent change that you want to be reflected within DataServe. And it looks at all of the data um, within the service request, the related objects within there. And it pulls back the metadata about the, the questions and the answers and the fields that you have within your service request definitions. And it actually builds it within DataServe's own uh, smart forms component, which we'll show you very shortly when we look at the integration side. And so it actually builds up its own um, service request templates, basically, based on what you have within Remedy Force. Um, you may also, of course, choose to build your own smart forms within DataServe entirely, if you wish. It may be they don't exist as a as a service request definition in Remedy Force. Maybe you're embarking on your sort of automation goals a couple of forms you need to create. You could just create them directly in DataServe. You don't need to go off into Remedy Force and create them and wait for them to be synced over. Um, or of course, it could be forms that are held in other systems. And just through the various integrations that we have, um, those forms can be pulled through. So I can go ahead, fill out this form and submit it. And then that's great. I've booked my time in with the service desk. What I'll just show you as well, if I search for and I'm just going to make sure I spell this incorrectly. So we've got service disk there. You'll see I still come to the same result. Um, but if you have a look at the searching keywords bit above, above it, it's showing what it's actually searching on. So it's very similar to when you search for something in Google a little bit sort of incorrectly. And it says, you search for this, we are searching for, for this instead. Um, it's doing that automatically when it passes off. Um, the, the customer search string and that covers the the second stage that we saw within those AI slides that we that we saw previously so even if we're spelling a little bit off we're still going to be presented with the right resources and as I said before it's fully language contextualized so based on uh, the language that's assigned to me um, then it'll be going off and using the correct dictionary and doing all the relevant translations 
I can also search for the word help. And this time it actually brings back a request and a knowledge article. The, the reason why I want to search for help is that help never existed within our book some time in with the IT service desk uh, form or request definition. Um, it didn't exist as a keyword or within the title or, or anything that we were searching on. And this is just where that machine learning and keyword enrichment process um, came in. What DataServe was doing was understanding that a lot of people were typing in help as well as some form of you know, book time in or service desk. And as a result, it therefore took help and it enriched that resource with that keyword. So the next time somebody searches for it, um, they can be presented with a suitable resource for them. Um, Matt's also got something broken, so his monitor's not quite working. So we can search for broken, and we've got our something isn't working, which is our default incident submission uh, template. And so we can open that up. What isn't working? Well, in this case, it's the monitor. Uh, the issue is it's broken, and this is affecting just me. And we can submit that. And that's now gone off and been created in whatever system it needs to be created in. Of course, it the user doesn't really care where it's gone off to. It could be Remedy Force, it could be a SharePoint form, it could be an email gone to whoever's managing uh, that type of work. Um, as far as the customer's aware, they've got an issue, they've found a form and they've submitted it, and they can track it through DataServe. So they don't need to be aware of those sort of back-end workings and how our service environment is set up. And um, of course, let's misspell broken. And we can still be presented uh, with the, the same uh, knowledge there. You can see broken's been corrected above. Um, Matt's day is even getting worse because he's got paper stuck in his printer and he's gonna search for printer. And this is just around the ontology that I spoke about before. You'll see within the searching keywords at the top, printer is in bold because that is the, the primary keyword that Matt's used here. Indeed, he's, he's only used one word. Um, and then not in bold, you also have jam and paper. And this is where data serve and, uh, you know, and understanding the ontology of, of business life and your specific business as well is additionally searching on jam and paper. And you can see we've got a, a few different things here. I can pay for printer credits as a request, um, or actually here, here's our printer user guide that has been scored 96% suitability. Um, this is being synced over from Remedy Force, uh, this one um, in particular. I can give it a star rating, maybe some feedback and submit the feedback. And you'll also see here, we've got a, a plus 20 points. It only popped up for a couple of seconds there and Zoom may not have uh, captured it for you. Uh, but that's something that's now earned me gamification points. And if we have a look at the top right, our number is now 245 and we are ever so slightly closer to our next level, um, which in this case is ancient forest. And just while I'm on gamification, um, again, these are just the out of the box uh, way of doing things. It's just an option for our customers to get them started. Um, we start off with acorn, move to sapling, then onto mighty oak, then onto ancient forest. Again, it's it's just a starting point and um, that's easily changed through the gamification admin console. You can have your own images, your own levels that can all be configured um, within the admin console. Um, next, uh, Matt's got an issue with his payment system as well. So if we search for pay, I just wanted to show you here the fact that we're now searching across four different types of items. So we've got requests there, we've got knowledge. Um, great, it's been presented with the alert that's saying the payment system is down. So maybe Matt won't get in touch with us with, with an incident and he can actually just follow that alert. Um, the fourth column in this case is, is links, but it can also be a collection of other things. So things like outstanding approvals or uh, tickets that he's recently raised or links like you have here. Um, that can all be presented uh, within this uh, section here. Uh, the next bit I want to show you then is around the, the machine learning. And I think probably the best way of showing you that is if I go into our administration console, go to our machine learning and chatbot settings page, we've got something called searches and scores. And you'll remember I opened up our knowledge article, our printer user guide, and I gave it a good rating. 
And all of that raw data, so those explicit actions, but also the implicit actions, like if I opened it up and closed it straight away because it wasn't suitable, all those types of implicit actions are also logged in our raw data table here. And it's, it's logging what search was initially made, how was it then corrected and enhanced, who did the search, what was their persona at the time, what was the action that they then went on to do, and what was the outcome. And we actually have um, a, a few levels. We have positive, slightly positive, neutral, slightly neutral, uh, sorry, slightly negative and negative. Um, what that then does, it gets rolled up into this overview. And, and this is really key, that this is where our persona score comes into it. If we take our how to fix your keyboard uh, self-help article, you'll see we've had interactions from people relating to three different personas, the, the client, the director, and the developer persona. And we can see what their persona score is. And in the case of the clients, they seem to really like it. All the interactions with that have, have gone pretty well, and they've got a score of two there. Um, the directors, pretty well as well, 1.5, while the, the developers slightly less so. So they, they still like it, but not as much as the clients. That then gives us an average score. What that means is next time a client um, has an issue to do with their keyboard and they search for keywords that then allow them to come across this resource. If you remember on um, one of our AI pages, we had a look at how the match score was then had a persona weighting applied to it. And that's where these numbers um, come into it. And the average score is also really important because if um, a person from another persona comes along, let's say the business analyst persona, and we don't yet have data for, for that persona and how they interact with it, we can then actually go ahead and use the average score, uh, which in this case is 1.58. Uh, we also then have a global average, and what this is really useful for is where you're um, embarking on your transformation projects, improving employee and customer satisfaction projects. You can actually track this over time. How has this average score changed? And it's basically showing, are we going in the right direction or not? I'm just going to show you chatbot as well. So if I search for printer and launch our chatbot here. What the chatbot does is it uses the same natural language processing machine learning that we had within our smart search. And, and here we have printer user guide presented to me just like before. And I can say whether that helped or not. Um, in this case, I'm going to say, great. Yes, it did help. That then goes and is, is saved as an explicit positive interaction with that resource against my persona. Uh, chatbot is also asking, is there anything else you can help with? Let's say yes in this case. Um, Matt is also working on a new project and he needs to set up a new Microsoft Teams team. And the chatbot's going to go ahead and find the correct form for him. I'm just going to fill this out quickly. A um, couple of very interesting fields here. These are lookups and these are actually integrated uh, with, with AD, with Active Directory. And when we loaded up the smart form, it actually went off and did a fresh get so that we had the, the correct user list. And I'm just specifying here who, who the owners are and who the members of the team will be as well. And we can go ahead and submit that. And if I just show you, um, all I'll do, I'll just finish off this chat here uh, with, the, with the smart bot. I'm just going to say thank you very much. That did help. Um, the bot then just double checks. Is there anything else um, we can help with? I'm going to say no in this case because we need to move on to our Q&A very shortly. And it'll automatically now close the chat down and I'm, I'm back to the, the intelligence search there. Um, and if we just open up what's next, uh, you'll see. Our new ticket is in there. It's actually ticket 418 within Remedy Force. I'll show you a very sneak preview of that. Once this refreshes, you'll see 418 at the top of the screen. And that's our, uh, that's our ticket that we've created. So this automation process is actually creating a ticket within Remedy Force so we can track that that work's being done and the user can track its progress. It's also going off to the Graph API and, um, and, and creating what it needs to do to do the teams. Um, if I go to the back end very quickly within our admin console, I can actually show you what is going on in real time. 
So if we open up the flow list here and have a look at the flow detail, um, these are all the things and it's, it's actually completed already then. So we kicked it off at 4.49 by getting the user list. The, the instant record was also created at 4.49. And then by 4.50, um, the automation had gone ahead and created the group and the team. And also the instant record will now be showing as uh, completed. So that's how um, an example of automation. Um, I'm conscious that we'll we need some time for, for questions and answers. All I'm going to show you here very quickly is our integration settings. It's a step, it's a four step process to doing this declarative integration and automation builders. The, the first thing we start off with is our smart forms. So these could be synced over from Remedy Force um, or they could be created actually within uh, DataServe themselves. And we have our own builder to actually create these smart forms that looks like this. Um, application integrations, this sets the authentication that we need. So how do we actually gain access to those systems? What's the auth that we need for Remedy Force? And also in this case, the Graph API. So that's all configured in there. The endpoint integrations is, is where it gets very interesting. This is where we now start constructing a payload of data that we're going to be sending um, to those specific systems. Um, this is an example of what we do to create a group within Microsoft Teams. Um, and you basically just go through, set all the mappings that you want. So which data serve field or data, do you want to go to which data? within Microsoft, it gives you a request body and you can ask for a response attribute. So you can start seeing how you can build up these rather complex integrations uh, using the simple wizard based process. And then finally, you bring them all together within what we call an integration instance, which is just chaining all of these integrations together. So what happens when we load up a smart form? What happens when we submit it? So that was a very quick run through how automations and integrations are handled uh, within DataServe. And I think it's now time for the Q&A. So I'll just hand over to Steve uh, to see if we've got any questions that have come through. Thanks, Matt. Um, have we got any questions through? We've had loads of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy typing some responses back um, to, uh, uh, to, to people. So thanks again for all those questions. I'm going to go through some, and I think, Matt, I'm going to put them to you. Um, we have had quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so again, if you can give some fairly pertinent answers, if we don't get through them all as normal, we will reply to those uh, separately offline. Um, the first question is, for example, um, can uh, standard Salesforce knowledge also be integrated uh, within chatbot? The answer is yes. That was very so quick. I was keeping that one nice and <laughs> person for you. Yeah, yeah, very simple. The good thing about it is, you know, where we've got our Remedy Force connector, it's a very, very simple process of going off and collecting the, the knowledge articles data. It's actually the, the easiest part of that. And it's it's the same thing when it comes to the Salesforce data. It's a, an endpoint integration Indeed. that goes off and grabs it. Okay. O open APIs and connectors uh, make it completely agnostic. Yeah. Um, second question is around, which is a very good one as well, um, is around, uh, you know, would an organization need to use both the Remedy Force portal um, and the data serve portal. Um, and I've sort of suggested, no, that wouldn't be necessary because obviously data serve is uh, very much persona driven, but Matt, do you want to add any more detail to that? Yeah, no, you're correct there, Steve. Uh, absolutely. It, I think it would be confusing for users actually, if they had a decision about which portal to go to, do I go to self-service 3.0 or data serve? The purpose of data serve is to remove that thought and actually integrate every portal that you may have within your organization into a single one. So the answer would be no, um, you ideally would have users just going to um, data serve. It doesn't mean though that you can't create all the workflows and the service request definitions that you want within Remedy Force if you'd like to do so, because they do just get fed into data serve anyway. Or you could go ahead and create the smart forms and the integrations that you need at the data serve level. It's whatever a, a customer feels more comfortable with. And I imagine most Remedy Force customers, because they've been using service request definitions and the like for a while, would probably stick with doing that and just use the connector to bring those forms into data serve. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that's answered that question. We've had a couple in relation to, to language uh, yep. translation. Um, so uh, a very pertinent one is around can the uh, the, the AI, uh, the machine learning, give an answer back in the user's native language. And of course, that's increasingly important because 
Uh, for any organization, particularly international ones, they're going to have different language speakers um, and, you know, trying to make that as easy as possible. Not everybody's going to be an English speaker or maybe the, the main company language speaker. So um, the answer, I guess, is yes. But again, what sort of information you want to give on uh, multi-language in data serve? Yeah, the, the, the chatbot is actually surprisingly simple to configure because the, the complexity to um, in data service around the natural language processing and the machine learning that happens within the search bar, the chatbot actually really just um, sort of leans on that same functionality. So when it comes to the chatbot's responses, um, a lot of them are set out already because there's only so many ways in which you can say, I found this for you. Please let me know if, it is, if it's helpful. It's the resource that the chatbot is presenting that gives their response context, if that makes sense. And um, yes, indeed, all of the uh, the ways in which the chatbot gets back in touch is, is multilingual. So it's um, it's not automatically translated, but it's it's there for the customer to say, this is how I want the response to be in Spanish. This is how I want the response to be in, in English, for example, for each of the, the different ways in which the chatbot responds. Great, thanks very much indeed. A question around, particularly around remedy force, I guess, although can apply to other systems if they're being integrated within DataServe, is, uh, for example, can the approval system be pulled through to DataServe? And the case there being, for example, where perhaps uh, you have an individual has delegated, given delegated approval to somebody else. Yes. Can that be pulled through from both uh, Remedy Force and Salesforce? Yes, indeed. So well, <clears throat> wherever we're integrating with, and particularly with Remedy Force and Salesforce, where we have our connector, we always need to conform to the correct um, you know, permissions and the like that are happening within that system. We can't give you any more or less uh, than you're expecting or else it just wouldn't work. <clears throat> and indeed, showing somebody more information than they're expecting is, is very bad practice indeed. So we conform to all of the things that you have in, in Salesforce and Remedyforce when it comes to permissions, and that includes where you've got uh, delegated uh, approval indeed. Great. Um, in terms of the chatbot, now uh, a question which of course is going to be quite popular and we've, we've had previously is around uh, calling the chatbot and can you call the chatbot from other systems so where, where an integration has been placed, uh, put in place? You could call DataServe so you could be able to um, launch DataServe in effect but it, it doesn't just sit as a standalone chatbot that's sort of kind of let, let, let's take um, self-service 3.0 within Remedy Force for example what this isn't this is not a widget that sits within there and handles all of the, the chatbot capability um, it is a, a standalone system that that, that does everything as you've seen uh, within the demonstration um, standalone um, so it, it isn't designed to sit as a, a separate uh, chatbot system it is designed to work holistically as data serve and of course a very pertinent question is around implementation time so a couple of questions around how long does it actually take to implement because obviously you've got some sophisticated technology in there you have machine learning obviously some people's experience of, of chatbots is it can take quite a while uh, to get the system set up and actually working what what's your answer to that days and weeks hopefully rather than months and years yeah, absolutely right. I mean, in terms of the configuring and like training the chatbot, um, you don't need to do anything of that sort from day one, because at the end of the day, basic keyword matching where there's an ontology that's understood and where there are corrections that are done based on the user's language can get you incredibly close to the correct records that you need anyway. And it's just a case really of as time goes on, it just gets better at doing so because your persona waiting is then uh, starting to be scored and improved. Um, it's worth saying though, that, that when it comes to the persona waiting and that machine learning uh, side of things, you can just have that baked in to the app from day one. So you may have an understanding of the types of documents and you know certain people like uh, submitting forms as opposed to knowledge. You can have all of those persona waitings in there as a starting point. And then the, the chat bots and, and the smart search uh, the intelligent search will just build upon that as time goes by. So in terms of configuring the chatbot, no, there, there isn't a lot of time required for that at all. Um, when it comes to uh, data serve, most of the time is spent uh, integrating with other systems um, where uh, you know, we have a customer that has an actual dedicated automations team. They're very serious about creating a lot of automations up to you know, possibly 75 to 100 different automations. That's where the time spent uh, with, with getting data server up and running. Mm -hmm. However, the, the core of it 
you know, getting it installed, setting up the Remedy Force connector, setting up some personas, um, setting up things like SSO, single sign on the, and the like, that, that's not long at all. That's your days and weeks. And then if you're looking at hundreds and hundreds of automations, you can just have those as a phased approach after you've gone live. So you go live basic, start building up your automations after that. And as a follow on to that one, as you've already said this, of course, um, the whole idea and concept of this is to make it as, as low code, no code as possible. So the idea is that even though the team may be involved in the setup, you're going to leave the organization as self-sufficient as possible so they can carry on doing these things uh, when the team moves away. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. As long as the, the organization has, has got um, some capability when it comes to understa understanding how integrations work, API integrations and the like, um, but they may be like me and they, they don't do too much coding and that they're not an integration sort of builder or, or coder, then yes, they'll be less self-sufficient doing it declaratively throughout the four-step process uh, that I walked you okay. through. But it's also worth saying we also have our own uh, support service as well at AIM. So we support you know, Remedy Force and a, a load of other BMC products as well as DataServe. So where a customer uh, may actually want AIM to do the automations for them or, or maybe they do have a small team and they might just need a bit of hand-holding at, at least at the start, then we have that, that service and support okay. package as well available. Very good. And I think, again, you've probably covered this, but it's probably worth being uh, specific at this point. So the question here is around um, sort of personas, I suppose. So, you know, uh, how granular can data serve be? So in terms of things like um, knowledge articles or service requests, can they be directed to certain uh, user populations or maybe into different regional offices? Um, or if, for example, systems being used to support maybe different organizations or customers, how gra granular actually is, is data serve? Yeah. So in terms of the permissions, it'll take what's within Remedy Force or, or the other systems that you're, you're dealing with. Um, so that's from a permissions point of view. Um, from the personas point of view, that's where we're, we're capturing data on, on how people are interacting with it and building up those persona scores. They can be very granular if you wish them to be so. You could have a, a persona for each person if you wanted to, although that would kind of negate the purpose of, of having a, an average persona score. Um, so indeed, very granular if you like. Uh, we find normally we're looking at between sort of 5, 10, 15 uh, personas because um, you want to get granular enough so that you get a good sort of um, persona score for the users, but not too granular, in which case you might not get uh, a larger enough amount of data. Okay. And um, final question is we're, we're just a little bit over time. Um, question here is around, you mentioned about how, how data service getting information on users. Mm. Uh, and obviously AD is, uh, is often a key source. But are there other options? And I mean, the question here is said, for example, Salesforce, if that's yeah. where your user community is based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, most of the time we're, we're looking at Active Directory as the, you know, the golden source of data and that's what using for single sign on and uh, that type of thing. But yes, I mean, absolutely. Or, or it, it could be a, a pull from both systems. You may have Active Directory and then you might start enhancing that with certain data from Salesforce into DataServe. It's however you want it to be. It's not rigid when it comes to users. Okay, great. Well, that's, uh, I think we've run out of time anyway. So we've had a great great set of questions there so thanks again for everybody who's put those forward um we're, we're sort of at the end now of our session um just before i pass back to the guys just to say that this has been recorded and we will be putting this on to onto youtube and we'll be sending you a link with the uh with the slide deck again so you have that for your records um back to you matt and then over to olivier for uh, for final closing remarks please yeah, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me for almost an hour, and uh, you know, for all of your uh, your questions that you've been sending over as well. It's been really engaging, so I uh, really much appreciate that. Um, just a final comment: the details are on the the last slide here. Um, if you would like to get in touch, if you'd like to find out more, um, usually what will happen at this stage is we would have a half an hour chat or so just to work out what your specific challenges are at your organization and um, possibly therefore go on to like a customized demo or even a proof of concept if you wanted to see, you know, a specific automation running, for instance, um, we could go ahead and, and get that set up for you. So our contact details are here as well as a link to the website. So feel free to get in touch to get those booked in. Right. Thanks. And Olivier, for your final comments, please, your final remarks. A bit short. I want to thank you, Matt, Steve, for this uh, very meaningful webinar on DataServe. And I want to thank everybody who attended. And 
as you said, contact details are on the screen, so you know where to find us. Thank you very much. All right, super. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Have a good evening. Goodbye, everybody.